During this Easter season, we begin Mass by singing the Regina Celi. Joy to thee, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. He whom thou was meet to bear, Alleluia. As he promised ever is, Alleluia. For us to God thy prayer, of thy Son, Jesus Christ, has brought joy to the whole world. Grant that, aided by the prayers of his mother, the Virgin Mary, we too may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen, Alleluia. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. In this octave of Easter, this Easter week, we continue to give thanks for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, and we offer our prayers in this Mass for the whole Church, that she may reveal the risen life through word and sacrament. So as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us pause a moment and call to mind our sins, seeking God's forgiveness and mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Within this octave of Easter, we remain standing to say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are most high, the Holy One. You alone are the most Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladdens us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles. Once, when Peter and John were going up to the temple for the prayers at the ninth hour, it happened that there was a man being carried past. He was a cripple from birth, and they used to put him down every day near the temple entrance called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could beg from the people going in. When this man saw Peter and John on their way to the temple, he begged from them. Both Peter and John looked straight at him and said, Look at us. He turned to them expectantly, hoping to get something from them. But Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, walk. Peter then took him by the hand and helped him to stand up. Instantly, his feet and ankles became firm. He jumped up, stood and began to walk, and he went with them into the temple, walking and jumping and praising God. Everyone could see him walking and praising God, and they recognised him as the man who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were all astonished and unable to explain what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Give thanks to the Lord. Tell his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. O oh, sing to him. Sing his praise. Tell all his wonderful works. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Be proud of his holy name. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Consider the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. O children of Abraham his servant, O sons of the Jacob he chose, he the Lord is our God, his judgments prevail in all the earth. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. He remembers his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognising him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them, called Cleopas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported. 
but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them, and their eyes were opened, and they recognised him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road, and how they had recognised him at the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this week of Easter, we hear the stories of the resurrection as told by the various evangelists. And today, we heard the well-known story from Luke's Gospel of the journey and the supper at Emmaus. The journey, the first part, is often overlooked for what it has to tell us. The account we just heard omits the opening words of verse 13, which says that it took place on that same day. So this appearance happens on Easter Day itself, reminding us, of course, that in this week of Easter, we celebrate Mass as if every day was Easter Day itself. Hence, we said the Gloria earlier on. But Christ certainly wastes no time in revealing himself. The first news of the resurrection is shared by the women who go to the tomb. But Christ himself is also active in revealing himself. And to whom does this appearance take place? They are simply described, first of all, as disciples, although one of them is later given the name of Cleopas. The other, however, remains unnamed. It's a reminder that there are many disciples beyond the famous 12 disciples, or rather the 11 that are left, and that Jesus appeared to many people during the days following the resurrection. This wasn't something limited to a small number, but experienced by a wide range of people. Sometimes the risen Christ appeared to individuals like Mary Magdalene, sometimes to a pair of people as in this story, and sometimes to the eleven disciples, and sometimes again to much larger groups and even crowds. And it says, they were talking together about all that had happened. When Christ comes, he walked by their side. A particularly beautiful phrase, I think. Christ is there alongside them on the journey, alongside us on our journey too. And this reminds me of something that someone once said to me, that the account of the empty tomb on its own proves nothing. It is only the experience of the risen Christ which can convince and transform and make someone a Christian. And we can see the truth of this in this story with these two disciples. It is through the opening of the scriptures and the breaking of the bread that these two people come to experience Christ, for he is alongside them, he is with them. And it is the same today, when we encounter Christ in word and sacraments as we do at this Mass. 
It is through these things that he makes himself present and he reveals his life to the world. It was the same then and it is the same now. In that story, first of all, Christ walks alive, alongside his disciples on their journey, which is a physical journey, but also a journey of faith as they try to work out what they now believe about Jesus. But then it goes on to say that he went in to stay with them. When they reached Emmaus, they invited him to join them. Indeed, they pressed him to join them. And he accepts their invitation and he goes in and eats with them. And so this is the Christ who also comes into our hearts to dwell with us whenever we ask him, whenever we invite and press him to do so. And so on these 40 days of Easter, let us ask with earnestness for the risen Christ to come and be with us. Let us ask him to help us to experience his presence afresh in the word of scripture and in the sacraments and to dwell with us in our homes where we must be for most of the time at this present time. And so now in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord Jesus Christ, you walked alongside your disciples and came in to dwell with them. Help us likewise to walk with you and invite you into our lives and hearts. May we see you and hear you in the reading of the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the Holy Church of God throughout the world as she celebrates the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fill us, we pray, and all Christian people with joy, hope and peace in believing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray especially for Christopher, our bishop, for Richard, his assistant bishop of Kingston, and for all the ministers of God's church. For all Christian people that they may share the good news with others and especially for our church of St. Michael and all angels and its parish. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our world at this time when many are suffering from coronavirus, for all governments, for all national leaders, both and local councillors and all those seeking to prevent the further spread and impact of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for the sick, for Lorraine Tice, Francis Harmon, Rosalind Fletcher, Oscar Townsend and Dickie Skilbeck and any known to us who need our prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. For the recently departed, amongst them Deep T. Wickmer Singer, Ray Willits, Horacio Lacunza, and all those whose anniversaries fall at this time. May the risen Christ grant new life to all those who have died. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. In a moment of silence, let us bring to the Lord our own prayers for this Mass. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Lord came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us the salvation of mind and body through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. And on this day of Easter, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. And therefore with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven we laud and magnify your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Michael the Archangel, our patron, and with all the holy angels and saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Justin, our Archbishop, Christopher and Richard, our bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacraments of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.